Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the Peak Design Travel Tripod. Now, I realize I'm about three years late here because uh, it was introduced um, almost three years ago, maybe. Uh, and everybody and their second cousin did a review on it that was anybody on YouTube. But it took me a while to build up the courage to spend the money <laughs> to get a good sturdy travel tripod this one that I bought is um, carbon fiber which means it weighs about two and a half pounds it does um, let me tighten that up it does fold up very very small um, and it it comes with a case I'm not going to bother showing that in this video but the case um, fits very very snug around it has a little uh, handle that you can carry it or you can buy a strap which I did to put at both ends and wear it over your shoulder if you want to do that um, it does come out very easily um, and in fact it would basically just fall if I were to hold it upright, but then you wouldn't see it all in the camera. So um, it has uh, solid feet on it. it. It gets good traction wherever I use it. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I am going to show you a few of the, uh, of the things on this tripod that I do like, and so I'm going to make it just a bit taller for the video. Um, so that you can see everything I'm talking about. We'll try to get a few close-up shots along the way. Yep, I mean, since we're doing a product thing, let me put this out here where you can see the Peak Design logo. So a couple of things here that are, are to note. When the, when the, uh, when the head is, is lowered all the way down inside, there are um, grooves that it fits into to give it its really compact view. One of the drawbacks of this, of course, is that you can't tilt the camera here. You have to actually pull this up at least a little ways, and then you can tilt the ball head anywhere you want it to go. Anytime you extend this center column, you make the device weaker. And I do realize that. However, it doesn't have to come up very, very high and I have not noticed it being a problem as of yet. Um, the other thing too is that there are some adjustments that need to be made along the way for different ways to use it. And for that, you need um, a, a hex head. And so there are two different sizes that come in a little plastic case and it just clamps onto any leg that you want it to clamp onto, and they're there. We'll show you this here again in a minute. The other thing is that it has a hook at the bottom. Um, let me turn this around just a little bit so you can see a little better. There is a hook at the bottom uh, that is removable. Now, it will hold uh, a lot of weight, and I have used it to hold my sling bag with my extra lenses and stuff to sort of give a little more sturdiness to the tripod by putting a little weight down the middle. But if I, um, if I pull this down just a little bit and then turn it, this comes off, which allows me then to take the, the column out. But in addition, you'll notice this little piece pop down. This is magnetized, and this is um, a phone holder let me just pull my phone out here so you can see. This is a phone holder that basically um, 
it just has a spring load in it. And so I can put my phone on here. If I needed to video something with my phone, I have the ability to then put this on the camera and or on the uh, tripod and use it as well. So I don't have to carry an extra piece of equipment um, to use my phone if that's what I choose to do. And then it just slides back up in there and the magnet holds it again. So if I wanted to take this out, for instance, um, I'm gonna put this back on just to make sure that that doesn't fall out. And all this does is this pushes up in and twists and locks in place. And then it will not come out. So there are a couple of things here. Um, let me just show you very quickly um, I'm going to, whoops, <laughs> I can't put that back in with that in there. Um, I'm going to lower the tripod back down just very, very quickly here. When the way this comes, it comes with a head on it that only uses the peak design clamps that are designed to use, um, with the uh, clamps you might put on your belt or hang off of a strap and then just kind of click everything in. So this little uh, head right here, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try to get a close of it later. Um, this simply fits in and clamps in place. Let me lock that back down again. Clamps in place. Now it can go in four directions. It will fit any four directions you want it to go. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that this little lever right here could be bumped. And so as you put this in, it's hard to do down below my eyes. As you put that in, there is a locking mechanism here on the back that if you simply push this around to lock it, then this little piece won't move and it is on there extremely tight. It is not coming off. Um, so one of the things that you have to remember using it is to make sure that you lock that clamp if this is the ball head you're using. The other thing is that um, if you want to maneuver this camera, there is a locking ring on the bottom that allows you to put it at any angle you want, lock it into place, it's not going to move. It, it is extremely sturdy in that regard. Uh, where sometimes with a regular ball head that I'm using, if I angle my camera a little bit and then tighten it up, the camera bumps down even further because the weight drags it. I have not found that to be true with this. Once you lock it, it is locked. It will not move. So that in a nutshell is the tripod. Now I use a lot of, uh, a lot of times I will use portrait mode, which of course I can use here. So let's just put this back on, tighten this back up. Pull this back up a little bit further than before. And you can see that it will easily go into portrait mode if that's all I wanted to do. However, this does not allow me easily to do panorama in portrait mode. And for that, I bought the additional uh, tripod ball head mount. Um, and I forget what this cost. It wasn't really expensive, maybe 20 or 30 bucks. It is made out of the same high quality um, metal that this piece is made out of. And so we're going to take this off. Take this off. Take this out. And this is where if you're going to use this this way, which I am when I take this out to show you the tripod in action, I'm going to use this other ball head. And so you need 
this piece right here. So what you're going to do, now I'll see if I can do this quickly. What you're going to do is move this ball head over so that you can see this little hole on top. And there is a screw that connects this piece to the column right here. And it only takes about, I don't know, six or seven revolutions. And because it's sort of in an L shape, it works relatively quickly. You can immediately feel it getting loose. Um, the other thing is that this screw inside not only has a bushing on it, but is also magnetized. It's not going to fall out. It's in there. So I can then attach this piece. And let's see, there is a screw inside the ball head screw. And I'm just going to tighten that down on there. And then you've got this piece attached to the column. Now, before I put everything together here to show you how this is going to work, um, I'm going to take this back off because one of the other options that you have, which I should have thought about originally, is you can use this or you can use this by itself. And the reason that you would do that is if you wanted to get really, really low to the ground, then you could put your camera on very, very low without having to turn the column upside down installing your camera upside down to hang above the ground, which I have never been able to use effectively. <coughs> um, and so that is an option. And you'll hear when you put the legs back in place, they automatically click back into the lock area. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so I'm going to put this back on again. Now, I don't know if I'll get a close up of this or not, but there are three little tiny screws here. And when you buy this ball head, these screws are sticking up about a 16th of an inch. And you use this little tiny head to get up inside these holes and, and lower these down. What this does is when I take my panorama head and put on it, then I can take these screws at the bottom and screw them up into the bottom plate. And, and this is not going anywhere. Uh, this is going to be really, really tight. I'm not going to bother with that right now. <clears throat> so let's just do this. Let's put this back on. Let's put these back on. I have never had a problem with these falling out, by the way. Um, some people pick their tripod up by the leg and they might bump it off the leg. I never do that. I always pick it up up here just underneath the camera. So I've not had a problem with this. So once this is on, um, one of the things you'll notice <coughs> in the original head, there is a leveling bubble, which you would need to level before you put your camera on because you can't see this after you put your camera on. So that would allow you to sort of maneuver it around a little bit, level it, tighten it up, put your camera on. My panorama ring also has a bubble head on it, but I can see that when the camera is on. And so because I always carry an extra ball head with me for the platypod, I always have one that I can use. And you'll notice that with this, obviously, this is no longer as compact as it was, but that's irrelevant um, because once I take this back off, it pretty much is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out today. I'm just going to take a picture that I've taken before using this tripod. I'm going to do a long exposure panorama down at the Tennessee Aquarium. At least that's my plan. Um, and to show you exactly how well this works, because you can take pretty much any tripod and shoot one two hundredth of a second or one five hundredth of a second, and it doesn't matter if it's flimsy or not. Where the real battle comes is when you're in a place where the breeze might be blowing. 
and it might have a tendency to um, waver a little bit under the weather. So I'm going to take it down there and we'll see how it looks at that point. Let's go. Okay, so I am set up here with my tripod. I've got it level. I've got my camera up on portrait mode. I have my uh, remote release to be able to get a long exposure. My ideal here, the water's not too, not too busy, so my ideal here is to maybe get a minute and a half to two minute exposure. So let's see what I've got right now. I'm at f11 and 1 50th of a second, so if I take f11 and I go to 1 50th of a second and I use my 15 stop neutral density filter, I'm at actually an 11 minute exposure, so I don't want that. Okay, so if I move the aperture to f8, and I bump my ISO to 400. Let's see. That gives me one two hundredth of a second. That gives me a two minute and 44 second exposure, which I'm gonna go for three minutes, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna put the neutral density filter on, um, take a few shots, we'll see what we got. I have both my graduated neutral density filter on to drag down the, the light in the sky just a little bit and my 15 stop filter um, and I am in bulb mode of course manual focus um, I am working at three minute exposures I've got about six probably panels to do so I'm not going to video all of that obviously um, but we'll see where we wind up when we're done. <laughs> 